Okay, thank you everybody for calling in to Molecular Devices uh, webinar. Uh, on Stalbert Factory using another plate reader uh, platform with an imaging photometer. Uh, my name is Kai Proctor, and I will be your host today. Um, I will introduce you to uh, our panelists in a little bit. Um, thank you for calling, and I will also ask, I'm going to open a polling session for just a few minutes, so if you could just take a, a moment and answer a few questions that will appear on your screen, that would be great. Um, if you have any questions about the WebEx or any problems, please use the Q&A button. Um, also, you will receive the number that you see here for the technical support that will be um, uh, sent to you uh, through the Q&A as well, so you can see that uh, throughout the webinar if you will have any issues. I would like to take a moment and introduce you to um, Alexa Devices and uh, tell you a little bit about what we do. We have a number of instruments. Uh, we have uh, our plate readers, which you can see in, a, in your top left uh, of the screen, uh, with the new uh, Spectrumx i3, uh, which is our multi-mode platform, and that also has the imaging cytometer option um, added on that. So that's our latest uh, instrument. Uh, we are also known for our um, software, which supports both of uh, our plate readers, which is the Softmax Pro software, and Evan will talk about that a little bit um, throughout his uh, uh, webinar. And also Metamorph is uh, another software that we are known for, and that uh, we have quite a bit of experience in the image analysis, and we are building on that, um, um, on that knowledge with imaging spectrometer. Uh, we offer complete uh, automated solutions for cellular imaging. So in the bottom left of the screen, you can see how we help um, you with uh, the data management and all the, the images and storage and accessing the, the information. Um, so we handle more than just the hardware, more than just the instrumentation, but also provide you the, the full solution. And then finally, in the bottom right of the screen, you can see our high throughput um, instrumentation for for the drug discovery um, with different point meters, uh, our, our iron works, um, and also clone kits, which is kind of the, a fairly recent addition to our uh, family of products. Next, please. Um, here you can see uh, that we have an understanding of, of um, imaging. Molecular devices has quite a bit of experience with imaging products. Uh, starting uh, on the bottom right, you can see with our plate meters, you can get basic endpoint data. With our additional imaging cytometry, you can actually look at your cells. That's what we call serial cellular uh, resolution. And then as we go into our high content imaging, you can see the cellular and subcellular um, information out of your cell. Next, please. I'd like to take a, a moment and introduce you to our I3, uh, Spectrumax I3 instrument, which again is our latest uh, uh, system that was just launched uh, earlier this year. It has the three base mode functionality of a golden fluorescence and luminescence. It has the flexibility of user upgradable application cartridges, uh, where you can add additional modes such as Alpha Screen or HPRS. We have uh, improved sensitivity with a special illumination, uh, special fusion illumination technology that's built in, um, and that and also provides extended dynamic range. That's really thanks to the optics and the design of the optics of the system. There's the imaging uh, cytometer, which is the mini mass option. Uh, you can see here in orange, and all of that is supported through our again industry recognized software, Stratmax Pro. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, uh, Evan, uh, Dr. Evan Cromwell is the Director of Asset Development. Uh, he's been with Molecular Devices for over five years. Um, he has over 25 years of um, industry experience. He was uh, um, the founder and the president of the Blue Shift uh, Company. Uh, he is an author of over 30 papers and presentations of, uh, in very diverse areas of biology, physical chemistry, and analytical chemistry. 
um, and he holds over 15 patents um, in this industry. So with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Evans. Thank you, Tasha. So today I'd like to go through some of the solutions we brought for imaging cytometry to the market. Uh, we're very excited about this new system, the i3 Minimax, as Tasha presented, um, and really want to focus on several key applications uh, that you know, people use cytometry for, uh, from cell inspection using bright light, uh, to basic viability assays, to more complex organ-specific toxicity. And then finally, a cardiotoxicity assay that we've developed using calcium sensitive dyes, which you can see the, the eating cells on the right, which is really a novel way to characterize um, toxic effects on cardiomyocytes, which are, are in human, like human cells, which uh, represent the function of the uh, cardio of the heart. Um, and really a, a very exciting application that we're developing on, on several, several of our platforms. Um, following that, we'll have a question and answer period. So first, cell inspection with bright light imaging. Um, it's one of the basic applications people do with microscope systems, and what we've done is brought that capability into a plate reader system. So now instead of having to run down the hall to your microscope, you can put your plate on your imaging system on your plate reader and capture images of your cells. We've really worked on the uniformity of the illumination and the quality of the images. It's very important to our, our users. Uh, so if you want to do cell counting, look for confluence. Um, you can do single cell detection or cell colony counting uh, with the system. Uh, the image quality and resolution is there. I'm showing you here several examples of different cell types. You can see the different morphology and the, uh, the different uh, formation of the clusters of cells, from Cho cells to HeLa, some of the most common, uh, Hubex cells, Hex cells, U2OS. And again, the focus on the quality and uniformity of illumination allows us to be able to process these and get information out in the transit light uh, application. We really focus on this system on uh, making it very robust and very simple to use. People who are using plate readers, are very used to putting your plate in, you press a button, and your data comes out. And so from the start, we had that uh, in mind when we're designing the system. So here we have a transmit light cartridge, which goes in the top of your i3 system. It was do top illumination. Um, again, it's designed to be very uniform. Um, you can actually do it with transparent lids, and so it makes it very convenient to use. The optics were also designed for trouble-free operation. We have a proprietary solid-state illumination. We use a high-sensitivity CCD camera and a custom laser autofocus. Anyone with experience with high-content imaging knows that trying to get the image in focus is one of the more tricky things to do. We've created a system where that's done automatically. Um, no user setup or intervention is required with our laser autofocus. You put your plate in. The system finds the plate and adjusts the focus automatically on your cells. We've also worked on the workflow so that it's very intuitive to a plate reader user. Everything has been incorporated in SoftMax Pro from the acquisition setup to data visualization. And the steps in the setup are again in the same workflow as any type of SoftMax Pro plate reader application. We have an imaging plugin, which we use the Metamorph Core to do the image analysis portion. And that allows you then to set up um, analysis in a very simple, intuitive way to look for either cell counts or cell preparation. I'll go through the variety of applications. And once that has been set up, it's all stored in a single protocol or experiment, and you just press the read button, and the plate is read, analyzed, and the data comes out um, as it would any other plate reader assay. So you can look for the well-by-well -well data, you can look at heat maps, you can look for graphing and curves. And so all the functionality of SoftMax Pro is available to out analyze and visualize your data. I mentioned intuitive image setup. We allow you to look at either a max and min or a, a positive negative control, if you will. 
and you can then do a well-by-well -well comparison for your uh, setup of the exposure. Um, fine focus allows you to adjust for different plate types. Uh, we have several supported plate types, but we know that our users have a wide variety of plate types, and so you can customize your individual plate into the system. Then you can zoom in, you can see the quality of your cells, um, do visual inspection, uh, QC, uh, if you will, before you start your assay. So now I want to move on to a variety of applications from basic cell viability, cell counting, uh, to general toxicity and organ specific toxicity, and really show you the uh, breadth of applications that you can do with this system. Um, now incorporated into a plate reader. Each one of these, I uh, won't go into too much depth. We do have posters, application notes, papers available, a number of these applications. So if you want more information, please contact myself or Tasha, and we can provide that information to you. And sort of the background, you know, toxicity testing is really becoming a, a big focus of the pharma and, um, and biopharma industry. Um, mainly because of all the fallout of drugs due to organ toxicity, um, specifically heart and liver, and also neurotoxicity, too, is, is uh, a high category there. Uh, so 45% of drugs can be or recall for cardiovascular issues, 37% for liver, and the industry has been moving from in vivo animal testing to in vitro cell-based assays. Reduces the cost um, of the assays, the number of animals that have to use, um, and also allows you to move these into screening environments where you're assaying mostly chemicals and metabolites, uh, looking for mechanisms of toxicity, mechanisms of action, etc. And so the um, focus on this has something that we've been working on with our high content systems, and now moving into our I3 Minimax cytometer. You can think of it as two general ways. You can do imaging toxicity or plate reader toxicity. In plate readers, the standards are cell tighter glow, looking at luminescence, uh, calcium AM as a fluorescence marker, or the viability markers. Uh, for example, we show on the left uh, dose response uh, using the viability for an actin, a fluorescence forcing chain actin. You can do that also with imaging systems, there's cell tracker. Guys, Mito Tracker, uh, Hirsch, Zappi. Um, in the plate readers, you can go fast. You can get fast determination IC50, but so you don't get uh, multi-parametric information like you do with an imaging device. And you can't look at phenotypic information. And so what we now have done is to combine those to give you both a uh, plate reader output as well as imaging output for your toxicity assessment. Probably the most a um, straightforward method is just do a simple cell count and look for effective compounds in cell growth or, or cell viability. We again allow you to image the cells using a variety of fluorescent markers. And then with analysis, be able to count the cells, uh, segment them, uh, flip the cells, and count the number of cells in each well. And this is done very fast. The analysis is done within the time it takes to uh, image the well, and we do that simultaneously with the acquisition. So by the time you read your plate, your analysis is done and your results are available. In terms of setting up the analysis protocol, um, again, we focus on simplicity, uh, making it very intuitive, easy to use. We have uh, several different protocols, which or analysis types, if you will. In this case, we're showing the cell count protocol, where you can set up a, a threshold and intensity value, and then some parameters of your cell, um, minimum, maximum width. And with those parameters, that then allows you to uh, segment your cells from the background and do a cell count, or total area, or average area, um, whatever parameter you think best fits your assay output. So I mentioned before, this is all powered by the Metamorph. So all the experience and um, background we have in doing complex imaging processing and fast image process algorithms we brought into the SoftMax probe uh, program. The cell count you can get with the system is, is excellent quality. 
Um, here we're just showing a simple uh, system measurement where we're doing a cell titration across the 96 cell plate. I'm using calcium magnetic staining. It's probably the most common cytometer application, just in doing simple cell count. And here we allow you with the SoftMax Pro to get CDs less than 5%. Um, dynamic ranges of several orders of magnitude. Um, we compare these to our other high constant imaging system in such micro and get very good agreement with that. Again, excellent, excellent capabilities for the most basic application of a cytometer. Now, if we move into more complex, um, here we're showing an example of marker expression. Again, just a, a mock assay where we're doing antibody dilution to show the capabilities of the system. You can see from high in, uh, antibody concentration to low, you get different uh, expression. Um, and then we can use a cytometer instrument to measure this. If the total expression gets full induction, um, a variety of, of assay applications can be used with this. For analysis, in this type of assay, we use self-proliferation protocol. Again, another one of the standard analysis settings. And here we're using a simple threshold to segment cells from the background. And then doing integration of intensity to look at total area, total integrated intensity, and again, um, different outputs depending on the assay requirements. Here in a uh, more traditional uh, inflammation type assay, we're showing the ability to look for expression of V10 on QVEC cells. And these QVEC cells are culture in the presence of TMS alpha, and then staying with a 50 conjugated uh, anti V10. You can see in the image, which is the control uh, with low expression, and as we stimulate the cells, we see upregulation of V10 and corresponding increase in intensity. On the left, we see the different types of analysis protocols that can be used. You can do a cell count protocol or a marker expression protocol uh, for this assay, again, depending on, on the requirements of your assay and uh, what type of outputs you're looking for. And then using this, we can then do uh, concentration response, dose response curves for, in this case, a couple of uh, known anti-inflammatory compounds, uh, monitoring integrated intensity, um, and then doing this again in a multi-well pipe format as a pipe meter assay, but with the power of imaging to improve your uh, system capability and assay capabilities. The software allows you to do a variety of output parameters, as I mentioned. Um, you can do results per well, uh, averaging the cell events or cell objects over a whole well, or you can do per cell type analysis where you're looking for uh, populations of the cells. And this can be intensities or area or other phenotypic information. And then the last part I want to um, show you about the software here is really the assay data review. Again, this is something where we incorporate everything into SoftMax Pro, so it's the same type of interface, the same plate output that you would get with a plate reader assay. You can look for numbers, you can look for heat maps. So in this case, you can now click into any well, and you can review your data on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. You can view the images. By clicking on the well, you pull up a zoom well screen. And here you can see on the left-hand side, you get a view of the well, of the cells that you had. Um, click on any object, and then that is highlighted into the uh, object ID, where you can get the output parameters for that. And you can also graph those, turn on the right. Here we're just looking at the area of each cell, and you can see the relationship between that area, uh, the parameters, and the location, or that specific object. And so you can do that for any object. You click on outliers where they're located, you can interrogate the parameters of any of the cells, and so it's a really very powerful way to look at your data and to QC your assay or understand what's happening to the cells in your assay. In addition to looking at your cells, you have also the, all the other advantages of SoftMax Pro. From the robust acquisition analysis platform to doing customized 
first hitting, all the standard IC50s. Uh, you can set up the reports in the way you have to used to, 3D graphing. And so again, the whole uh, interface is based on the Slot Max Pro to provide you a very simple, intuitive, well-known way of setting up your assays and getting your data and generating your reports. Now I'll move on to some organ-specific um, toxicity and some other examples using stem cell models. Here we're showing an example of hematopoietic stem cells where we're looking at the expansion and differentiation of cells in the presence of different growth factors. Again, showing the power of imaging to be able to do cell counting and really be able to analyze the um, assay output in a very uh, robust fashion. Here we're looking at uh, CD34 positive cells uh, being cultured in different cytokine combinations. Um, in this analysis, we're showing the cell tracker green, which you can also use glycophorin-A or other markers uh, for the different type of progenitors. In addition to using that to measure expansion and differentiation, you can also use it to measure toxicity. And here we're measuring the cell number and looking at the toxic effects of different cancer drugs on the respiratory differentiation, which is a model for anemia. So here you can see a very nice dose response for four different compounds with IP50s and expected ranges and very good D prime factors. Uh, this was done in three and four wall sites. Uh, using the cell count algorithm. Um, and so, again, a, a setup in a plate reader where you can get the imaging advantages to look at your individual cells and do a much better classification of toxicity. Next area of importance to the industry is a drug induced liver toxicity. As I mentioned before, this is a leading cause of uh, recall of drugs from the market um, and implicated in many different liver diseases. Um, and I won't spend too much time on this. Like I said, we have a number of posters and application notes in this area uh, on work we've been doing uh, on using stem cell models for liver toxicity. And here we're showing some results from a hepatotoxicity assay where we're using I-cell hepatotypes from Cell Dynamics uh, plated into 3 to 4 well plates. And then using a variety of different stains to look at the uh, toxicity and the response of the cells to different uh, toxins. Um, here we're using action stain and looking at proliferation, uh, measuring total cell area uh, in each well. And you can see from the heat map as well as the dose response, you get very good assay results uh, from this uh, cell model from the from the system. We're showing the IP50s from four different uh, known uh, hepatotoxins, um, and see very good D prime values as well as assay windows. The third area of uh, importance is your own toxicity. With our system, you can do very good imaging of neurons. Um, it doesn't have the high resolution like you would with our image stretch micro, where you would do uh, a neuro outgrowth or uh, look for detailed information on the branching. But you do have sufficient resolution to deal with segments of cells and using uh, cell area or percent coverage to see good toxic toxicity effects. Um, and this gives you the information in a much faster manner than you would with a high content imaging system. Here we're looking at uh, neurons. These are ISOM neurons, uh, IPS derived neurons, which were cultured for five days and incubated with retinoic acid for 24 hours. And the same with the beta tutelin antibody. It's much 448 later. Again, you can see the degradations of the neurons uh, due to the retinoic acid. And if you measure IC50s, you can see very good response um, with EC50 in the expected range uh, for this compound.
I'm using from cell. There is also a capability to do whole organisms. You can put gene fish into a 3D for a well. Um, if you anesthetize them, you can take very good images of them. Um, and gene fish are a model system for, for many different um, diseases. Um, they represent the organs of um, humans uh, very well. And you can get knocked down zebra fish um, with different uh, effects and uh, be able to analyze these again using the, the Softmax Pro software. The last application I want to go into, this is one that we've been working on for several years. Um, and it's really in the area of cardiotoxicity where we're using calcium sensitive dyes to look for a phenotypic uh, response of the cell. Um, again, this is very important to the industry um, because of the uh, effect of cardiotoxicity on, on drug recalls. Um, and what the industry is really looking for is improved cell-based models that are more physiologically relevant, uh, can represent the complex biology of the human heart. And one of the areas we've been focusing on is IPS-derived uh, cardiomyocytes. And the other is really advancement in the assay techniques and instrumentation. Um, looking at the cell toxicity um, gives you some information, but is not been predictive enough, not been sensitive enough uh, for really having a predictive cardiotoxicity assay. And so we've been looking at cardiomyocyte contraction and been seeing very good results uh, from this assay. Here I show some results from our image of microsystem where we're looking at the contracting cells and watching the calcium, intracellular calcium flux, fluctuation uh, that occurs with the contraction of it. So with the control well, you can see a very nice um, uh, beating or uh, contraction rate. If you add a compound to epinephrine, which is a known a stimulant, a positive chronotrope, you can see a definite increase in that beating rate, uh, which you can also measure on the bottom here as a intensity versus time. So you can see the increase of fluctuation. And if you add a compound is the parafinol, which is a known uh, negative chronotrope. You can see that the contraction rate slows down. Now, for the analysis and the imaging, we can then integrate the total intensity from each image in a time lapse period, and that gives you the health profile here. In the I3, we can use the fluorescence intensity and fast kinetic fluorescence intensity to do the same thing where we're integrating the total intensity from all the cells, um, not providing any specific image information, but we do get out uh, the beat rate and the profiling like you would in the uh, image of micro or a flipper system. And if you want more information, as I reference you to the uh, journal article by uh, Octana Sorrento and journal by Mr. Sweeney, which came out uh, earlier this year. So again, being able to do this assay with the Spectrex I3 system um, really allows users to um, move this to a, a less complex platform, um, but still with the, the capabilities of the more extensive uh, flipper system. And so here you can see a uh, screenshot from a uh, assay that was set up looking at uh, different compounds and effects of compound on the beating. Um, again, we're measuring the calcium fluxes and using the fast kinetic fluorescence mode. And in the Softex Pro software, we've incorporated the Peak Pro algorithm, which allows you to automatically measure the um, beat rate and other parameters of the uh, pulses. In addition to the eating cardiomyocytes, you can also do cell viability with the imaging mode. And so now we're combining two uh, forms of toxicity measurements, two outputs in one system, which again, are very complementary and give you a much higher uh, capability to look at your cardiotoxicity. So on this slide, I'm showing you just some uh, representative deep cases. 
um, taken with the Spectrumax I3. And you can see with positive chronotropes, each peak here represents a contraction. Um, and you can see increase with uh, isopropanol. With propanol, which is the negative chronotrope, you can see a decrease and eventually uh, stopping of the contraction. And then with compounds such as cisabride, which is a, a known herb channel blocker, um, you can see that the peaks will elongate as there is delayed in repolarization in the blocking of the calcium channel, of the calcium channel. Um, and as that increase is further, you can get into um, a case which is uh, similar to arrhythmia, where you have very fast contractions and uncontrolled contractions. So again, being able to monitor these effects and be able to characterize not only the beat rate, but the peak width and other parameters of this is a very powerful tool available on the IC platform. Then we can combine this with the Minimax. And here we're looking at the uh, images of the cells. This is where we've seen them with counting AM. And you can see the phenotypic information and the cell viability and understand, for example, with isoprochanol, as you are increasing, um, how is that affecting your, your cells? Or in other cases where you can see uh, decrease in beating or stopping of the beating is that due to cell toxicity or is that due to some other effect of the compounds on the, the cardiomyocyte? And this then allows you to do side by side comparisons where you can look for changes in beating profiles and compare that to changes in cell morphology. For example, the control on the top, you see you maintain the the good uh, cell layer of uh, some morphology. Sounds like compounds like phosphorubicin, we see a definite uh, degradation of the cells and toxicity to the cells, as well as a, a uh, elimination of the contractions. And haloperidol, again, another uh, potassium uh, uh, and channel blocker, you can see this uh, characteristic elongation of the pulses, but the cell line stays intact. In star four, and you can see another uh, type of uh, toxicity to the cell. Um, they still maintain some contraction, um, but the toxicity is definitely evident in the uh, imaging. So then be able to combine the capabilities of monitoring the contractions with the I3, as well as monitoring the cell viability using the Minimax, uh, provides a, a very powerful tool for studying cardiotoxicity. So here we show some data, again, looking at the uh, dose response of six different compounds. Um, on the left, we show the uh, dose response, concentration response on um, using the peak count and the effect on the IC50s that were determined uh, from the I3 Minimax. And then on top, you can see the cell viability. You can see um, how these compounds at the high dose of 30 micromolars affected the cell viability. You can see star corn is a lone toxin, um, very strong effect, while some of the amiodarone or doxorubicin have a toxic effect, but not as strong as star corn. And other compounds um, really do not have a toxic effect on, on the cell, although they do affect the cell beating and cell, con uh, cell contraction. And so what we see is a much more sensitive measurement uh, perturbations of the cardiomyocytes using the, the peak count, the, uh, the, the beating, cardiac beating assay, if you will. Um, but complementary to the, the cell viability type of information you get from the imaging state assay. We can also apply this to doing screening with small compound libraries. And so with the uh, state control, the environmental control, that you can do with the I3, controlling the temperature. Um, we can put the plates in there and measure them over an extended period of time. Uh, the cardiomyocytes are uh, exposed using calcium sensitive dye, which we have a proprietary dye which results in health, which is non-toxic or very low toxicity to the cells. And so then it allows you to do these 
assays where you're screening coral three and coral plates in the plate reader in the I3 system. Here we're showing comparison between the cardiomyocyte feeding output and percent live cell as measured by the Minimax. And you can see examples here where you have two wells which are obviously toxic because of the decrease in live cells and no eating, but then other wells where there is no toxicity but you've affected the um, eating rate of contraction. In other cases here, we again show uh, very little toxicity to the cells or cell viability, but definite changes in the eating contraction rate. Um, in the H13 and 14, we see characteristics of a positive color trope, something that speeds up the cell contraction. Um, and then in the I13 and 14, we can see compounds which are elongating the pulses, characteristics of uh, herd channel blockers. And so there's a very powerful number of uh, information you can get from combining these two types of outputs. So with that, I'd like to then summarize what we've brought to the uh, industry here. So the first combination of a plate reader, multi-mode plate reader with imaging cytometer, um, allowing you to do all your plate reader assays as well as phenotypic cellular assays. It's a very attractive entry point and incorporated all the uh, aspects of imaging cytometry into our SoftMax Pro software for ease of use. Uh, intuitive interface, a very robust acquisition analysis platform with the power of a metamorph image analysis, our metamorph core in this software, and allows you to have all the tools available for complex image processing in the SoftMax Pro. We really bridged the gap between state readers and the high content screening. Going from the well resolution is you would have a plate reader where you would do ELISA's, um, some PG genotyping, um, cell type of load type assays, into imaging cytometry where you can do cell counting, you can turn organisms, you can live dead, uh, GSP expression, um, some of the very typical cytometry applications, all the way to our HCS instruments. Allow you to do subcellular information, look at micronuclei, look at neurox outgrowth. And so, again, spanning the um, range of assays from single data points down to intercellular uh, high content uh, imaging. With the Minimax and I3, we've really simplified the workflow. All the acquisition analysis is all set up beforehand into a single protocol or experiment. You then run your plate as if you would a standard plate reader where you press your read button and the outputs come out and you can generate your IP50, your reports in the same manner you would as any standard plate reader assay. And we provide you uh, many different applications. I went through uh, a few of them today. Again, not much detail on a specific one. If there's any area you have like more detail, more information, please contact either myself or Sasha and we can provide you that information. Again, doing cell count, proliferations, toxicities, um, general toxicity, organ specific toxicity, this is all um, capable now on the I3 Minimax platform. It's a simplified analysis using Metamorph software incorporated into the SoftMax Pro platform driving a powerful combination of plate reader and cytometry read mode. So with that, I'd just like to uh, thank you for listening and, and summarize, again, what we're bringing to the industry is the I3 Minimax system, the first to incorporate imaging cytometry into a plate reader, um, incorporating everything into a SoftMax Pro workflow to make it user-friendly, intuitive, a robust platform and provide you an excellent platform to do your common cell-based assays as well as all your other plate reader assay systems. My contact information is shown at the bottom there. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the 
all the uh, scientists in our organization who really did all the work to collect the data, Oxana Sorrento, and done most of the work here with the uh, cell models for hepatotoxicity, hematopoietic toxicity, cardiotoxicity, uh, Jane Hesley and Catherine Olson, and then the product managers and the variety of engineers, software hardware engineers who really are responsible for bringing this platform to the market. So with that, I'll pass it back to Kasha. Okay, thank you, Evan. Um, thank you for, for the presentation. Thank you, everyone, for um, listening. Uh, we're going to take some questions now. I see a number of questions coming through. So I will um, read the ones that we can get to. And, uh, um, uh, one of the questions was, do we have a, a built-in settings for different cell types? So you can set up your specific experiment um, and analysis for a cell type, um, depending on the size of the cells or the morphology of the cell. Um, so that can that can easily be done and, and stored for those those cell types that you then use over and over. Okay. Uh, another one is. Um, uh, what are the different uh, fluorophores that we're able to detect with uh, with the So we're able to detect a wide variety of fluorophores from you know, GFP um, to fluorotein, a uh, variety of markers which I showed, calcium AM, uh, actin markers. Um, you can do other dyes such as 5-3, um, propenium iodide. Um, so there's probably you know, 10 to 15 different fluorophores you can analyze with this system. All right. We have a number of questions coming in, so I uh, will try to get to um, most of them here. But um, is there, one of them is, is it a top read only and can it be used uh, for migration assays? So it's the I3 is the top and bottom read. So you can do, again, the three basic modes of reference top and bottom, absorbance, which is obviously a through the plate, and uh, luminescence. Um, the migration um, could be done with the imaging, although we don't have a migration uh, analysis protocol yet. But the Minimax allows you to export the images to any third-party software. So that expands the, the capability of such analysis if you want to do a, a migration assay. Okay, and I also believe that we can do migration on the, uh, with the WellSCAN feature of the plate reader itself, uh, which will then show you less information, but uh, I know we've done that in the past as well. Mm -hmm. um, So it looks like uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, I'm, I'm just reading through a question, sorry, just give me a second here. Uh, but it looks like some people might have already had uh, some experience with Minimax that are on the line and they're asking kind of more specific questions. Um, so we'll, we'll probably address those offline. So one thing I want to mention about the migration is um, I, I didn't talk about in this um, webinar, but you can tile images together. So you can do a single image, which would be representative of the center of the well, or you can tile multiple images together to do whole well imaging. And so that, again, allows you to do type of migration if you're looking for um, you know, a scratch in a well or something like a platypus type assay. You can also set a region of interest. So if you want to set a region of interest, again, in the region of the well where you have um, removed cells, then you can watch for total area or total cell count in that region of interest on a change over time or under um, different conditions.
Um, another question is uh, there's a couple of SMS questions, so maybe I can uh, take those. There's a question about that. Is the spectrum max ICD a filter based or monochromator based system? It's a monochromator based system, so the top, and there was only a, 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 this will be one slide kind of introducing you guys to it, but it's a, we have a built in monochromator that can handle the basic three modes. So the absorbance, fluorescence, and luminescence, and as Evan mentioned just now, uh, it can read top and bottom, and uh, and then you can add additional read modes to it, such as the HRF or alpha screen with the user installable cartridges, similar to what we uh, what we have on our paradigm system. So that's um, that's how the SECMAS I3 uh, works. There was another one, there was a question about um, colonies. So um, there's a question that says, we do um, collagenic cytotoxicity assays, uh, in which we put cells at low densities and then allow individual cells to grow, and viable colonies of over 50 cells are counted. Can the cytometer quantify colonies, where they would define the size of the colony? So we can definitely quantify colonies. Um, you could do that in transmitted light, which allows you to do the area, each area of each colony, and you can get correlation between uh, area and number of cells in the colony. If you stain the colonies with, you know, a calcium AM or some, uh, say, non-toxic live cell stain, uh, then that allow you to uh, do individual cell count in the colonies. So there's you know, different ways to approach this, this assay. Um, there's a question about digging a non-consecutive well in a, in a single read. I think that right now we can read. Yeah. You can select the well read, but, uh, but uh, um, you might need to separate into two different experiments in South Axel, which you would be able to read. Um, um, you can do the auto read and and when you can select a different well, but I'm not sure in single experiment if you can select different non consecutive wells. In in the minimax system you can select non consecutive wells. So you can select any wells that you would like to read in the imaging mode. So that that is possible. Okay. Uh, there's also a couple questions about the time. So one is asking about what magnifications are av available, and then what is the scan time for 384 well plates? With, uh... So the uh, system uses a 4 objective, which gives you uh, sufficient resolution for looking at cells, uh, segmenting cells. Um, read time for a 384 well plate is going to be less than 15 minutes. We get 12 minutes per 3D4 well plate. Next is analysis time. Okay, there's a couple questions about, so I think in, in some of the images you show the purple contrast, and it was asking about, uh, I, I guess I just was a little confused with the, the green detection and the purple contrast. So if you'd like to answer about that, talk a little bit more about the masking. So the the masking um, in the actual in the program is green. Um, there was some uh, color liberty taken, but um, the the masking that you receive in the the system will provide you the outline of each cell, and then you can highlight in the zoom well images, and then that would turn a different color. And the colors that you see on the screen also can be selected. So in terms of the viewing preferences, we do allow in the software different options for when you do your mask. Uh, I think there are different colors that the users can select. Um, but that's really more for just whatever, however you want to, you know, show your, your data that's after that position. So there's some uh, flexibility in terms of user friendliness on, in the software of how you want to show it. Um, 
There's a question also about the uh, presentation. So we will be um, uh, the, the webinar recording will be posted on our um, on our website, and will the link will be sent out to everyone who has attended or registered. Uh, even if, if some people were not able to attend, but they have registered for it, they will be you know the link to the um, the recording itself. In terms of the PDF of the presentation, um, I don't think we normally um, post it, uh, but on a per request basis, we could probably release that. Uh, Evan, if, if you're okay with that, then I think we might note a couple people that have requested that. Um, yeah, you know, we can provide the presentation. As I mentioned, a lot of these applications uh, we have more detail on in, in posters that we put on in the conferences or in application notes. I think that uh, we'll probably uh, close. There's some more questions. I guess there's some more specific questions in terms of people that have used it and uh, wanted to follow up with some additional questions. So we'll we'll take those offline, and if we uh, do not hear back. Um, an answer to your question, we will email you directly. Uh, or if you have requested pricing, as some of you did in the Q&A, then we will definitely put um, a sales rep in touch with you to go over and the pricing options. Um, so I think with that, I'd like to thank everybody for, for joining us. Um, I hope you found the webinar useful. And uh, uh, it's been a very exciting uh, year for us with, with the new instruments and all the new possibilities and definitely kept us busy in terms of all the different applications, as you can see. Uh, there's been a lot going on, and we will come to this update um, all of our customers with the new um, application notes, and we have a number of posters coming also for um, uh, later in the year. So thank you, everybody, for dialing in. And also, uh, thank you to, um, to Jenny Sue, who has uh, helped us organize the webinar, uh, and just wanted to appreciate all the help.